Hello and welcome to a Total War Saga Troy. I've finally been allowed to show you guys some gameplay of the campaign. I am allowed to do, I've, I've already posted a, uh, a community post about this yesterday, but I'm allowed to show you guys 90 minutes between free videos. I mean, I'm, I'm allowed to do uh, up to free videos, but I will be doing free videos of the Manalaeus campaign. And then in a couple of days, I'm allowed to show you 90 minutes in free videos of the Paris campaign. I'm not allowed to show you guys anything else besides that. I'm also currently not allowed to show you the Paris starting screen. I'm only allowed to show you uh, this starting screen and then of course the actual gameplay. So we're gonna go through this stuff real quick uh, so I can jump into the actual campaign. Uh, first of all, there's no difficulty settings uh, in this uh, early access beta demo, whatever you want to call it. We only have normal difficulty. Uh, but there's a couple things I want to already say about that when we get into the game as well. Anyway, so we are Menelaus, the king of Sparta. We start in Sparta, which is awesome. Our starting situation is normal. We have some victory conditions here. I'm not going to go through this because we can't play that far. Anyway, we also have a limit of turn 40, but I doubt I'll be getting that far in 90 minutes. We have the call to arms as our faction uh, specialization. Uh, having a defensive or military ally allows you to recruit units from their roster. So we have the ability to recruit a ton of different units um, from other factions, which is really useful. Call to arms units can be recruited regardless of where your army is. So again, we don't need recruitment uh, buildings or anything. We can just get them as long as we are a defensive or military ally with someone. And call to arms units take more turns to be recruited. Although there are, there are some buildings that actually reduce that again as well. Then we have uh, Spartan Colonies, which allows us to instantly colonize a race settlement within your line of sight without sending an army. Um, so yeah, there are race settlements in this as well. There's also uh, settlement trading, just like there is in, in uh, Free Kingdoms again. Um, but yeah, we can colonize towns just by moving an army there, but specifically to the Spartans, to us, Menelaus, we can also do that from a distance, even though we don't have an army nearby, which is awesome. Settlement colonization costs are uh, costs resources, and faraway race settlements are more expensive to colonize. So yeah, the further they are, the more expensive they cost. So a recommended playstyle is Menelaus' roster combines devastating, heavily armored infantry with effective slingers used for preemptive strikes. Our unique faction units are the light spear runners, the axe champions, and the heroic axe warriors. And then there's four types of heroes. Uh, and every faction has one that they can't recruit. So in our case, we can't recruit the archers, uh, but we can recruit the defenders. There's three different uh, defenders. We can recruit the fighters and we can recruit the warlords. So then there is a whole bunch of information about uh, Menelaus, of course, which I'm not going to bother reading right now. And we are the son of Atreus and Aropi. I'm going to be butchering names all over the place. I'm probably better at the Chinese names than at the, I'm at these old Greek names. But anyway, we have a plus 6% to melee defense of all units in this army and plus 4 to the influence over a province in this region. Take Helen back. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to skip the cutscene because this is just a normal cutscene we've seen before. Uh, the, I don't think it was the announcement cutscene, but the one they, they did quite recently. Uh, but I am going to let you guys see the, like, Homer actually talking to us. Uh, our, Homer is the advisor in this game, which is interesting. Hear me, spear-famed Menelaus. Brazen Prince Paris of Troy has dared to steal your wife. Paris of Troy must pay! Gold-rich Mycenae, ruled by your brother Agamemnon, will support your cause. Troy thinks to slight me, but they will pay the price. As well as exacting vengeance upon Troy, other matters demand your attention. Open rebellion has devastated the region of Aetis, where a pretender is trying to take power for himself. South of Aetis, this is a known bug. Tyrans They're fixing that on Kithara release. Island, blocking your access to the treasures of Crete, which are beyond imagination. Consolidate your power at home. Urge Helen's suitors to honor the oath of Tyndarius in your defense, and wage war on the perfidious Trojan princeling. There we go. Get rid of Homer. How they play Sparta, Spartan colonies, and call to arms. I already explained this, so let's just skip right over that. We've got a mission to defeat an army belonging to the following faction, Spartan Noble Pretenders, which is these guys right here. 
Uh, we get some food and some bronze, so there's where the multiple resource system comes in, which I'll explain in a moment, now that I know more about it. I've already played a, a decent bit of the Mandalay's campaign, as well as the Paris campaign, who is all the way over... God, where the hell? Over here. I believe, yeah, he starts over here. Anyway, um, so yeah, I want to explain to you guys uh, a bunch of a bunch of things. Uh, I want to just talk about the game a little bit as well. This is going to be, you know, the first three parts of a campaign, but obviously I'm not going to be continuing it because when I get the actual full game, um, we are, you know, our safe games aren't there anymore. Uh, things are going to be changed and, and, and stuff. So there's a couple of things in this, in this build that are currently uh, not working as intended. There's a couple bugs, like obviously that guy uh, that you just saw was not there. He was, uh, well, his body wasn't there, but his sword and shield were. Um, you know, things like that. There's bugs. There's a couple of things in, ba in battles that aren't working as intended, but I'll get to that later. Um, I should mention we have only got access to this build for a couple of days. I'm recording this obviously a couple of days in advance. Um, and then hopefully we'll get an actual full build of the game pretty soon. But for now, we have access to just Manalais. We also can only play uh, Manalais and Paris. We can't play any other campaigns. They're not available to us either. Anyway, so uh, the multiple resource system. I love it. It's really, really good. I've actually... Uh, okay, so first of all... Uh, anyone who, uh, because I'm playing this, anyone who automatically assumes I'm, uh, what do they call it now? I've heard this term so many times recently. Um, God, it was a term. Anyway, that I'm selling out, basically, and I'm, I'm, I'm just doing everything that CA wants me to do. If you don't, if you think that I'm like that, just tune off now, because I can't be bothered. Anyway, I love the multiple resource system. I actually love Troy overall so far. Af after I played the first battle, I actually talked in the video about how I wasn't really convinced. Uh, it seemed to be a lot like Warhammer, and I just didn't like most of it. After playing the campaign, my opinion has changed drastically. The multiple resource system is... Absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, and I think it's going to be very difficult to turn back to any normal resource system after having used this. It is a bit iffy in some cases, like for example, units only cost um, food basically, and then uh, when they get higher tier units, like this light tier spear unit runner is a higher tier unit, it costs bronze. Um, so you're not paying them anything really, you're kind of just paying, you, you give them food to work for you, which seems like a kind of a, a weird thing, they're not getting paid anything. Um, but beyond that, the multiple resource system works really well. So what it basically means right now is that uh, wood and food, or food and wood, I should say, are your most basic resources. Uh, food is mostly used for upkeep of units, uh, and there are some buildings that cost food to build. And wood is mostly for building uh, buildings. So essentially what you can do is you can you can have a really low uh, income of food but still be able to build buildings whereas of course normally in Total War games when you have low income you just you can't really do anything um, whereas in this game you're still going to be gathering food all the time so you can see the top number is what we currently have the bottom number is our income in that resource so we can have you know only you know we can have zero income of food but still be, be able to build a building every single turn so you're never really going to be stuck like that which is really awesome stone and bronze are two slightly more advanced um, uh, resources. So stone is also used for certain buildings. Like this, I believe, costs yeah 330 stone and then 1,060 uh, uh, wood. And then bronze is more for units. So it, it also, again, you know, sometimes you'll need bronze to build a building as well. Sometimes you need gold for a specific building as well, but those are really rare. Um, but yeah, bronze is mostly used for higher tier units like the light spear runners. And there's some units that cost a lot more bronze, of course. And gold is like the rarest resource. This is actually a limited resource. There's only so much on the entire map. There are some ways to infinitely get more, uh, which, for example, we can do in the Royal Decrees. There is the 20 gold per turn. That never depletes, but there are actually... Uh, certain places, I think there's one down here, we can actually already see it right here, in Lapa. Uh, this is a gold resource um, town, so this one actually mines gold, but it do the deposits run out after a while, and then there's just no more to get. I think you still get a certain number, but it's like a really low number. Once it depletes, it just becomes a lot worse. Um, so gold, while it is technically infinite, there basically it is kind of limited in a way. There's only so much to go around. Um... So that's the five resources, and I, I love the system. I think it's great. Uh, you know, you can trade them all away as well. Um, so you, yeah, you, you can go into trade, and you, if you want to, I don't know, 
trade for non-aggression pact you can you can throw in different kinds of of resources there's also of course uh i guess we could just jump into trade just so i can kind of show you again i'm just gonna be sh i want to show you guys like all this is what i usually do i just want to show you guys everything and not actually you know i'm not making an ed edited video talking about things logically i'm just gonna scream at you until i hope you understand so let's talk to mycinia who we currently already have a defensive alliance with a um, so you can see all the different options here or most of the different options here so we got uh, military access military alliance confederation and then we also have the barter and single barter so uh, a regular barter agreement we can do five to 10 turns there's no like 20 turns 50 turns whatever and there's no less than five so it's either five sorry it's either one or five to ten there's no two three four um anyway and then you can you, you can throw in any of these things and of course they uh if you yeah do so like gold is super uh, valuable so that's going to be a lot worse than just you know one food for five for whatever turns um there's no ancillaries or anything like that, so you can't trade ancillaries like a free K, but again, there's multiple resources, so that kind of works the same way. Uh, there's also, like I said, region trading. Uh, let's find someone who is closer to us. Let me get this guy here. I believe it we can please me trade territory with him. So yeah, we could do that. Of course, I'm not going to, but just kind of show you uh, that it's possible. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, all the things you know from, I guess, Free Kingdoms, also Warhammer, etc. Non-aggression pact, military access. Defensive Alliance, Military Alliance. Um, actually, more War, uh, Warhammer 2 or Warhammer than it is 3K in that in that sense. Um, there are still a lot of things like Warhammer. So let me talk to you guys about the thing that I currently is uh, think is is most uh, destructive for me personally in this game. And I think uh, they, they are working. They are thinking about maybe removing it, but it's not going to happen before release. Um, and that is the supply lines, which is exact is uh, basically exactly the same as what is in. Warhammer 2, where if you build another army, I can actually show you guys that right now as well, I think. Um, each additional hero recruited will increase your total upkeep by 1% bronze and 30% uh, food. Now, this is currently not the right numbers. These are over. These are way higher than they're supposed to be. Because, again, this is normal difficulty. Imagine what this number would be on um, uh, legendary difficulty. But yeah, 30% food is abs abs absolutely insane. Um, but apparently that's supposed to be 12% in this in normal difficulty normally. Uh, I couldn't get the actual numbers out of the people from CA yet. They, they weren't 100% sure yet what exactly everything is going to be. But if the numbers are actually going to be ludicrous, because apparently right now it's supposed to be 40% for legendary, which surprises me because normal is 30%. But anyway, um, if, if it's going to be anything like that, I'm probably going to be playing on lower difficulties because I simply can't be bothered. I really hate that system. I just, I can't, I just, I can't get over how much I hate that system in Warhammer. One of the reasons why I just don't like Warhammer that much um, is the artificial difficulty like that. The same goes for happiness. There currently isn't any downside to happiness, but they were, like, I, I tried to get some information out of them, uh, and, and yeah, they said some things about uh, currently happiness is way too easy to be acquired, and I think even on legendary, if there is a artificial minus eight legendary for playing Minus 8 happiness for playing a legendary. It's probably is still fairly easy to keep 100 happiness all, all over the place anyway. But even so, I just hope those things are, are not going to be in or, or get removed or whatever. Um, and also, unit balance. I can't say anything about unit balance. Obviously, the build that I played before on legendary difficulty, uh, it was all ridiculously difficult. So, oh man, I'm not playing the game. I feel bad for you guys. I'm sure you guys want to see gameplay, not me talking. But anyway, um, I'm almost done. I'm just going to jump in this battle in a second. Um... So yeah, there, the unit balance was ridiculous on legendary on, on the harder difficulty of that build. But again, that build was not really a representation of what the actual difficulties are going to be like in the full game. But again, this is normal, so there's no real balances or no real bonuses to AI. So I have no idea what it's going to be like when it actually is uh, on legendary. So I don't know which difficulty I'm going to be playing at because the reason I hate Warhammer 2 so much is because legendary difficulty is all these stupid artificial difficulties that I absolutely despise, and that's one of the reasons why I don't want want to play it anymore so if Troy's going to be the same I may just not play it for that reason or I would at least play on a lower difficulty anyway shall we play the game um so right we have two towns already we have Sparta and we have Oitelon sure um again probably butchering names but uh we already have a couple of buildings here so we can see I guess I can go into oops not that one we can go to um the building browser we can already see uh, all the buildings that we have again I don't want to go over too much detail here but we have uh, of course the regular building uh, then we have the special building, so Menelaus Sword Fighters is like a big buff uh, for your units and such. We got some special things. Usually when you build, for example, we build this building here, this will lock out that one, so you can only have one of these two in a province. Uh, then we got all the recruitment building, 
Zeus and uh, a gate bastion giving you garrison, etc., things like that. Then we have all the administration buildings. So this is going to give you like growth, for example, happiness. Actually, this influence, this one's happiness. Uh, yeah, things like that. And then we have the temple building. So uh, of course, the gods are a big thing in Total War Troy or Total War Saga Troy, um, which we can see here, the Divine Will page. So you have seven different gods, sorry, yeah, seven different gods, um, each one giving you different bonuses. Currently, there's a couple that have been deemed incredibly overpowered by some of us, which I believe is, yeah, Athena. Most spear units have a bonus versus axe and uh, sword infantry, and Athena gives a bonus to spear units. So basically, spear is just getting it's becoming super overpowered, and then you just go for Athena, and then you just have unbeatable armies essentially. Because when you get to tier two, which is you need to have two hundred, but you can get there pretty easily. For example, Hecatomb gives you seventy if you build a single. Sorry, a single building that worships that god, you get a hundred. Although it does go down by ten per turn, so you need to make sure you keep it up. Um, but anyway, if you get to tier 2, Mentor of Heroes, you get plus 40% melee attack of spear units and plus 40% melee defense of shielded, spear, shielded units, which uh, most spear units are shielded. Um, so yeah, just it seems really overpowered, but again, there's different gods doing different things. I'll just quickly go over them if you want to pause, then you're free to read those if you want. I think they may have even been shown in a video already from CA, but either way, there you go. Um, and then there's also, yeah, you saw there, there's a, a prayer you can do as well. Prayer gives you some, uh, uh, like, you can do it for different gods. Uh, it costs a little bit of money, and again, gold is super rare and this, well, not rare, but relatively valuable in this game. So you need to be, you need to really think about whether you want to do something like this. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's things like that available as well. Um, then uh, there's, of course, the minor build, minor settlement. So minor settlements aren't walled, which is another great thing. I really like that. I always hated about uh, Warhammer 2, where you basically were always locked into the same build because you always needed walls in your minor settlements. Uh, or at least that's how I played back in the day. Um, but yeah, these ones, they don't get walls. Uh, there's nothing that gives them walls. You can get a bigger garrison, of course, but you can only get the tier 2 building. You can't get the tier 4 building. Same as Warhammer again. Um, the towns just only go up to level 3. Small towns, anyway. Um... And then uh, the main thing that you'll be doing is resources. So every single province has a resource attached to it. So, well, not the main bit of provinces, but the minor ones. So this one is stone right here. You can see that one's bronze, uh, that one's wood, that one's gold right there. We saw one of those earlier as well. God, okay, there's one. I was gonna say there's uh, there's no food around here, but yeah, there's food right there. Uh, and then they all have the same type of buildings, uh, except of course they give a different resource. So the ones I found are most useful are the stone mine, or the, well, the, the one on the far left, and then the fourth one here. Uh, they essentially do the same thing, except this one's better, but it costs a lot more to build. So what? Well, I mean, they all give the same. They all give resources, except for that one, which just increases the overall resources in the province, but at the cost of happiness. Um, and then this one at the cost of growth. So what they do is they they give you uh, the resource, and then they, that just gets better over time. Um, and there's a high influence bonus, and high influence bonuses kick off once your influence is above 80, uh, 60%. So you can see here our influence is 85%, so they are currently active in this province, and they will be in any province where we have our uh, influence above 60%. So if we were to build this here building, we would get 45 stone rather than uh, just 20. And then of course that only gets better over time. The reason why this is good is because it, it gives, just gives an insane amount, but it costs a lot to build as well. But also cause gold later on. You can build something like this one instead, which also gives a decent amount, but it reduces your influence, which might lose you your uh, bonus. So then, you know, you might not get your high influence bonus from here, which makes this, you know, less useful. Uh, and then there's this one, which just gives us a really big, a huge amount right away, but it removes your growth, or at least it kind of destroys your growth. It also costs 420 wood, which is a nice little bonus, of course. Anyway, uh, and then there's a couple special buildings here as well. So those are different than the special... Actually, are they? I'm not sure if they are. Uh, no, they're the same ones. They are, there are some different ones for Paris, but we'll get into those when we play as Paris in a couple of days. <sighs> I still haven't played the game. Well, I'm just explaining stuff. I hope you guys enjoy this as well. Um, anyway, so let's go over the final couple of things. So we have uh, Royal Decrees. This is just your tech tree. Uh, currently, we already have the 280 food per turn and 90 bronze per turn. So we have 80 stone per turn, 100 wood per turn, or 20 gold per turn. This is really valuable, so I kind of feel like this might actually be the best way to go right away. But I like to go for wood because wood is really good. Obviously, the more wood you have, the more buildings you can build. And that's, again, the nice thing is that you can have, uh, you know, almost no food income. But as long as your wood income is great, you can just build buildings everywhere and you'll eventually increase your other resources, which is lovely. So I think wood is like the most important resource almost. Um, or at least the most fun one. So 
that's your research. There's obviously there's a load more stuff, which I guess, again, I could go over all of these real quick. Uh, this allows you to build a Trojan Horse Siege Tower, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's, there's just too much. Uh, you know, it's, it's usual research stuff. Uh, then we have, um, I guess, the character. I can quickly go over that. So you have some traits, which every character, of course, starts off with. Um, and then we have, you know, our, all of our effects here, our stats. This is, again, very Warhammer-esque. I'm not a huge fan. I just, I don't know. I just have traumas of Warhammer, I guess. I just can't, I just don't enjoy it. Level up tree is very different, though. Uh, very enjoyable. So basically what happens here is whenever you get a level up, uh, you can also save your points. So, for example, you don't have to pick a skill here to be able to pick a skill there. If you get to level three, you can just pick a skill here. You don't have to do one here. But anyway, what happens is you go down this tree, and let's say I want Dread of Ares. If I, if I take Dread of Ares, then this this skill is going to be locked. I'm not going to be able to take this anymore, and these just buff it, basically. So this whole thing is going to be locked out. If I take Dread of Ares, I can then, when I get another skill point, either choose one of those two, or of course, if I don't want those, I can just put a point in here, or save my points and put three points in here. Sorry, not three points, two points in here. If you take this one, that one locks. If you take that one, that one locks. So the same thing everywhere. Basically, you make a choice every single time. So if I choose this one, that whole thing locks. If I don't choose that one, that one locks. So there's always going to be decisions to make, and then of course you get all the way up to level 14, and after that, any points you get, you can just put into uh, different like uh, specializations. Again, there's tons and tons of stuff here, um, but and those are I think different depending on which kind of character they are. So Paris is an archer; he gets different skills than uh, Menelaus, who is a defender, I believe. Um, so yeah, that kind of stuff is all uh, you know pretty pretty clear. Uh, and then you help. Did I show equipment? You get equipment as well. Um, so yeah, we have Menelaus' shield right now, we have Menelaus' belt, we can unequip that, same as, again, Warhammer, you just unequip things like that. Um, you get five followers or items, and you get a shield, hand weapon, and a mount, which I think, I haven't actually gotten mounts yet, but I think they're like chariots, I don't think this is like a, a normal horse for a general, but there might be, I, I, I honestly don't know yet. Okay, uh, then there's recruitment. So currently we have a whole bunch of recruitment here. This is the normal recruitment for any any normal faction. But of course we have the call to arms recruitment because we are Menelaus. So we're playing uh, as you know as Menelaus. We have this option, so we can recruit a bunch of units from different factions. So those can also be seen. Uh, sorry, not that one here. Um, so we can see which units we're going to be able to recruit from different factions. So Marcinia is an allied faction, which giving uh, is giving us a bunch of uh, units to recruit. And then we have a couple other factions where we could see what we would get from them if we were to be allied to them. But we don't currently are, so we can't get those units, of course. Although most of them are just the same ones as here because they are very standard basic units. Uh, and again, we can recruit all of those ourselves as well. So we're not really missing much. There's a couple units here that we can get that we can't actually recruit ourselves, but uh, we don't necessarily want to. So it's all good. Uh, and then there's the Spartan colony. So we can see here uh, all of the towns that we are uh, able to colonize currently from a distance. So there's already a couple that are across uh, the water, like Eos right here and Melos. We can actually colonize those right now, despite you know not even being anywhere near them, which is great. Um, we can even go, let's see... Uh, we can go Lapa, which is that gold town, all the way down here. So we could colonize this right now and immediately start gaining a bunch of gold, which is actually not even that bad of an idea, come to think of it. When I did this the first time around, though, I just colonized uh, Etis, which is right here. Even though I could just run my army over, but if you run your army over, it costs you men, because, of course, you have to have men colonizing it. But if I just colonize it like this, um, I don't have to spend... Uh, oh, that's a bug. Okay, that's new. I haven't seen that yet. I, I built that building, and now it's... It's not showing that being built, but anyway, maybe if I click away. There you go. Okay, that's a bug, which I'll report, but I haven't seen that yet. Anyway, um, so yeah, now it doesn't cost me any men to actually do that. And those buildings are both ruined, so I'm going to build them up immediately as well. Uh, other than that, I think I'm pretty okay with what I got in terms of building. So I think it's time to do an actual battle, because this video is getting close to the 30-minute limit already, and I haven't even done anything yet. So... Let's go ahead and do a battle. So we've got Menelaus, we've got two units of Laconian... Uh, Laconian? Yeah, probably. Militia. Uh, light Spear Runners, which is our pretty elite-ish units. It doesn't sound very elite, a Light Spear, but it is. Um, Laconian Axemen and the Achaean a a a a Slingers, probably. They've got some Light Swordsmen, Laconian Militia, Spearmen, Skirmishers, and Slingers. And then the man... Hi oh god, Hyperokos leading them as well. Perfect. Let's jump into that. We can actually show uh, the map that we're going to be fighting on as well. Similar to previous Total War games, but I didn't. Um... But yeah, I, uh, I, I, I'm I sorry for the huge amount of talking. I, I'm just trying to give you guys information. Uh, hopefully that's also enjoyable. 
even if I'm not really playing much, I'm sure some people are just fucking skipping through, like, fucking play, but, you know, I'm sure other people are also interested in actually just seeing what I have to say. Um, so, yeah, anyway, let's play a battle. I can finally just kind of not talk about specific things anymore. There's a couple weird things here, for example, like, if I bring these units together and I drag them, the one on the right, for some reason, doesn't want to spread out, even though it can spread out. So that's one of those things that's been reported and it's being worked on, or maybe it's already been fixed for the actual release. But yeah, I can just set them up like that and then move them like that, if I wanted to, for now. Uh, and then we've got some axes. These guys actually have a javelin as well. I might just put them on the flanks and uh, just use these guys as the center units and keep this unit on the flank as well. So these are my axe, kind of my like strike infantry, if you will, charging guys. Uh, and then we have our slingers. And we'll put melee at the front. So, I've obviously already fought this battle before, so I know the enemy is just going to hang out over on their little hill there. So I'm just going to start moving towards them. And uh, actually not run, just walk for now. I don't want to... I'm not going to make silly plays. This is another bug I actually need to report. I've seen this since I started playing. Uh, this wasn't the, the same in the um, in the early access battle builds. This this wasn't a problem. Like, this is basically, you can move it out. Um, but if you move it in, it's supposed to just be flush. Kind of to the side. But it's still kind of showing all the symbols, which is a bit weird. I don't think anyone else has actually reported that either. So, I definitely should should definitely do that. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen the battles, by the way, this is, this will be your first taste uh, of 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 a, uh, a Troy battle. Um, so again, they work very similarly to to uh, Warhammer, uh, with um, you know you got your regular units. You've got some formations as well. For example, the light spear runners. This is uh, something unique in Troy, or at least it's new in Troy. Is the ability to switch weapons, so they can put their shield on their back. Uh, and become a two-handed spear unit, which makes them a lot stronger in attack, but obviously weaker on defense. It does give them defense from the back, though, so now you can see they've got... Uh, let's see, should be able to... Yes, a unit has enabled rear defense, so if we were to charge them in from the back, uh, or are in the back of an enemy unit, they actually get defended from archers, because they'll obviously have their backs turned towards the enemy archers, which is really cool. Um, and you can see the bonus for swordsmen versus axemen. And then we can see the stats we get from having uh, our our unit in uh, two-handed uh, spear mode. So that's really cool. I'm going to keep them into, or in um, shield mode for now, but I, I really like that addition. Uh, and then, of course, there's your, you know, your general with your general abilities and stuff. Currently, we just have the War God's Call, which allows us to uh, force a unit, not a hero, a unit to attack the Taunter, and he is, of course, the Taunter. For now, I'm going to just run up here and try and scare off these Slingers, uh, so I can sling at them freely and make them perhaps come charging downhill towards me. And in the meantime, I'll move up all my other units as well. They do have some skirmishers and some slingers, so they have the ranged advantage, so I'd, I'd rather not run up there and get myself killed. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, there's there's no... One downside is there's no real formations for units, so not like Free Kingdoms, there's no turtle formation or shield wall or whatever the hell you want to call them. There's nothing special currently. There's just two-handed or not two-handed, essentially, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, I mean, there might be on later game units, but there's no current actual... Um, there's no, like, custom battle uh, in this build. We can only do these two campaigns, and that's that's actually it. So, a bit unfortunate on that front. Anyway, we can then run away, which means I'm going to start moving up. Get into a position where I could shoot. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just trying to scare them a little bit. See, oh, he's charging towards me. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'll just run away. See ya. Goodbye. No interest in fighting you, sir. Alright, slingers are in range. I want to make their slingers run off again a little bit to make sure I don't just have a one-on-one -on -one battle, because that's not too great. Start moving up my infantry a little bit. Let's get you guys just a little bit that way. Your so hero these guys is under attack. Oh, crap. Okay. I guess I got hit by something. I wonder if I shot myself and that's why I was under attack. Morale dropping a little bit, but not really a huge deal. I can actually also make a unit come after us by using that ability. If their general comes this way, <laughs> that could be good as well. Oh, we're being slung at, so let's make sure we return fire on their slingers. And I'm going to run my general back up the hill again to try and scare their slingers. I don't really want to do a prolonged uh, slinger fight, to be honest. I'm going to run you guys over here, see if I can do a bit of a, a flank with them. They are light units, uh, so while they're, they are, you know, quite high tier, but they are still a light unit, so they're pretty fast. So yeah, we're making their slingers uh, run around. This isn't super helpful. Let's see if I can actually just get close enough to be able to use the ability. That'd be great. Oh, I think I tagged him. Yep. All right, let's make them. Let's run them towards our line. This way, fellas. So they're uh, currently taunted by my general. 
Let's see if I can just get my units in there. <laughs> That'd be great. I haven't actually done this before. <laughs> this is a really good idea, to be honest. Let's get them that way. I kind of want to turn this guy around to make sure that this doesn't run out. Okay, well, we're in there, so that's good. Actually, just before our slingers got there as well, so that's, that's good. Um, they have, let's see, do you have any units that are unshielded? I don't think they... Oh yeah, the Laconian Militia are unshielded, so I really should go targeting them for now. I like how they're running s different units this way, but not the ones in the back. They're kind of leaving a reserve there for whatever reason. Okay, let's get my axes in there. Kind of a late charge. I should have charged sooner. Sighted your hidden units. Oh no, my hidden units have been sighted. I don't really want to run towards their skirmishes, to be honest. So you can see, yeah, we have some jabs already chucked in there, which is great. Okay, we killed the slingers. Which gives us the ranged advantage, so I could just sit back and relax now, but if their javelins are just gonna sit there, I'm just gonna I'm gonna be okay with that. Yeah, there's one bug currently, which I guess I can try and show you here. Uh one kind of weird weird thing with units is that they there's essentially no collision. You can see here I'm running I'm just running straight for this unit. And that's uh that's being worked on. They're they're going to be fixing that, because obviously that's not what they want, that's not supposed to happen. Let's get him in there as well. Slinger start hitting their jabs, I guess. Okay, I don't want to actually be walking into range of those chaps, to be honest. I don't really want to walk them over there either, because they'll get ruined. Ruined! Okay, there we go. Now I'll start charging those, those skirmishers. And our slingers. Just going to keep firing on them for now. It's okay. But yeah, there's a... Uh, it's in here as well. We're chasing after an enemy unit, and we're going straight through two other enemy units, which is not supposed to happen. And it's currently... It can work in your favor, it can not work in your favor. It's, it's not... It's not good, anyway. Um, so that's something that they're they're aware of. It's been reported by many people, and it's going to be fixed. So no worries about that. I'm actually going to put my shields away, which allows me to run faster. So if they do turn around, they can definitely do a lot more One damage of your to units me. Has no more ammunition. No more ammunition. How dare you? Uh, but yeah, they can. If they turn around, they'll actually be able to do a lot more damage. But I'm also a lot faster now, so I might be able to catch them. We have 66 speed against their 46. So yeah, we're catching them easily. And this unit will destroy them. It's kind of a waste. I used them to chase off a unit. I could have used them here instead. It's a really strong unit. No problem. I'm actually not even doing too hot right now. I could probably run you around. But yeah, I'm worried about that. They, they're going to come back. I've so far found that slingers aren't really great. But uh, I'll just keep firing at them, actually. Um, but archers are like my favorite unit in the game. With Paris, I had Paris is focused on archers. And I had a, essentially an archer force with him. Well, not an archer force, but like seven or eight archers in a full stack, and that was just fantastic. Let's just use this ability to make sure they don't attack anyone else except for myself. Might be uh, time to run this unit that way so I don't get fully side charged here. I think it's time to get you back as well. Yeah, so those are fully shattered, so let's run these guys back. And I'm gonna, now that I'm, 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 there's nothing that's coming back anymore, I'm gonna run these guys around and shoot in the back of all them, because while they aren't super great, uh, shooting in the back of units is always Preferable. Yeah, one of my units is not doing too hot right now. They're the ones who are basically straight up in here. Yeah, battle uh, length has been increased a lot as well, which is good. Since the, the battle demo, I mean. Because uh, it used to be... I mean, again, if you guys saw it, you'll know it, it was it was not good. Your warriors are losing heart. My warriors are losing heart. My warriors are worrying, I'm sure. Oh, there's... The, okay, well, this is poor timing, because uh, I'm going to be charging... Or shooting in the back of them as well right now, so... It's not going to work out too well. But this unit getting in here is probably going to absolutely massacre everything now. Yes. yes. Those guys agree. But that is exactly what's going to happen now. I could try and shoot them, but my own men are in the way as well. It's not really great. But we are probably... Yep, there's a route. And then these guys are probably going to route any second as well. And then I imagine that general isn't going to last much longer. So I think, yeah, that charge in the back there was... Your warriors are losing heart. Phenomenal. Stop losing heart. It's, it's like right in the middle of your chest. How can you... Well, it's not in the middle. It's just to the left. But how can you lose your heart? It's not that difficult to keep it. Let's try and shoot the, the general. I was hoping he'd be able to just, you know, lose morale and leave. But, in fact, let me bring my axes back to help out against him. General v. General, uh, I currently am not a huge fan of. I think generals have, just don't die fast enough. You can see this battle, if they don't lose morale, probably would last, like... I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, not even joking. Like, it, it, it's kind of insane how long they last. And this guy's a fighter, and we are a, well, I think we're a, uh, a defender. So we are, like, super tanky, and he's supposed to be quite damaging. Victory. 
is close enough to taste. But anyway, uh, that's just one of those things with. Let's actually stop shooting with um, single entity units. It just that's just the way it works. Close victory. Yeah, I suppose that wasn't wasn't as clean as it could have been. I'm not sure if I did better the first time around, honestly. But overall, okay with that. I really like these animations here too. This is after every battle, in a, a, like a, a bit of an arena, if you will. I really, uh, I'm a really big fan of that. It's not, you know, something like, oh my gosh, play Troy because of these animations here. I'm just saying they look pretty cool. You got the, uh, the three options, getting money, getting morale for next uh, couple turns, and just getting replenishment, which is the one I'm going to choose. A welcome boost. A welcome boost. And now we defeat an army, got some food and some bronze as a reward. And our next mission is to muster or maintain 12 units in total. Got a close victory, killed an enemy, killed a faction, probably gained a rank, did indeed. So I can show you how the rank system works. Now. Well, I mean, I already did, but actually choose something. So we have the Dread of Ares to choose from, as well as the Assault and Battery. Assault and Battery gives us a uh, an ability to cost six rage per second. And you can have a maximum of 100 rage. And of course, you gain more from fighting, uh, which increases our damage by 40%, or our arm piercing damage by 40%. Uh, or we can have targeting a single unit and reducing its morale and stamina for 25 seconds. Costs 50 rage, and of course, we can increase that. So we can either uh, reduce our missile resistance by 30% as well, or reduce our melee attack by 25% as well, if you know we wanted to go that way. And uh, this, the decisions here are this one reduces the cost to uh, 3 from 6, and this one just doubles the armor piercing damage, so 80% better than 40%. Since we are, um, I'm, well, I, 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 don't, I think this is really good, but killing generals is just so slow that I feel like more damage doesn't really help that much, and I quite like reducing the morale of a unit. Because it means you can make units route easily, and that's always nice. So I'm going to take that. And then I think that's where I'm going to leave the first episode of this Menelaus campaign. The three-part Menelaus campaign. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. Uh, I feel like I, I didn't stumble too much, at least. I did, you know, get a lot of information out there rather than just ums and ahs. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned. I will probably, I'm not 100% sure yet, but probably be releasing one video per day. And then after the third day, I'll be allowed to do the Paris campaign or show you guys the Paris campaign. So then that will be, uh, like, it'll just be six videos in a row on six this different days. I think, I'm not 100% sure yet, because uh, I'm still a week and a half away before I'm even allowed to show this. So you'll see. Just, you know, another video will come soon. So stay tuned for that. Until then, have a good day and goodbye.